Hello there. Welcome to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robin Sun. And we are here to talk about paper cutting again today because it's so fun. So I have a story to tell you. Um, when I was in 10th grade, I took uh, geometry from this wonderful man. He had, I went to high school in Connecticut and he had been living in New Haven. He was, I believe, a part of a think tank at Yale University. And the town where I went to school was not near New Haven. And um, he really wanted his daughter to go to a nice girls high school. And um, so he became faculty at the school and then his daughter was there and he was with her and that was cool. I think his wife, her mom had died. I think that was the story. I, it was a while ago and I can't quite remember, but um, she was not with them at that point. And he was a newly single dad and he was doing right by his girl, which was lovely. Anyway, he was this brilliant mathematician and I took geometry from him. And the semester went something like this. We would get to class and open our books and he would say, okay, so how did everybody do on the homework? Did you have any questions? So everybody would have questions. It was very hard for many people. And I deal in the third dimension all the time and did as a young person too. <laughs> so on some level, I just kind of got geometry. Anyway, people would have questions and they would ask him, now this man was brilliant. He was think Yale University think tank, very, very smart mathematician guy. So a bunch of 15 year olds would say, oh heavens to Betsy, we don't understand <laughs> geometry. And he would sit there and do his absolute best. This was a man who moved heaven and earth to do right by his girls, by his his own daughter and he felt the same way about us he really wanted to be a good teacher however his mind worked on a level that was not like ours at all and he would work really hard to try to teach everybody and he would go in circles and i realized very shortly after this semester started that i had kind of a grip on the basics you know, like why you would even study geometry. And, and then if I listened to him for a little while, I got it. I got the next equation or whatever it was we were supposed to be learning. And, um, and then he would, you know, the girls would like tilt their heads and say, what's going on? And he would keep trying to explain, only he was explaining from his very, very smart math guy position. And it kind of didn't work very well. Well, long story. This came up for me because my sister and I had a little chat about making paper cuts. Lovely paper cuts. Are we in? Yes, we are. Um, and um, she was having some trouble. Now, my sister flips houses with her husband. So her work is not studio art like mine is. And um, what she can do with hammers and screwdrivers and power tools is quite remarkable. What I can do with little tiny colored pieces of paper is quite remarkable. Anyway, she was having trouble making the jump from what she does to what I do. And she was talking about having a hard time with um, making paper cuts be successful. So I thought that we could have a little chat today about how to make paper cutting, sorry, really long intro, um, and I didn't even drink coffee this morning. 
but I thought we could have a conversation about how to make paper cutting as successful as we possibly can. So the first thing I want to talk about is the weight of the paper that we use. So I have here brown paper from a <laughs> grocery bag because why not, right? And then this is colored bond paper, you know, office paper. Although I have to say this is this is kind of hefty bond paper. It it's pretty good stuff or the ink the, the coloring makes it different or uh, something. Um, and this is origami paper, which is very thin. And in terms of paper cutting is a delight to work with. Um, we could go thinner with uh, um, tissue paper. And you really can't go a lot thicker than, this is a, this is actually a, well, no, this is probably a standard weight grocery bag and anything heavier than this like cardstock you really can't fold it and if you did fold it it would get uh, little crinkles um, you know the paper would break as you folded it over I'm trying to really quickly find a little piece of cardstock that would prove my point and of course all I can come up with is a big piece of cardstock Um, so, let's see, is this paper going to do this? Well, what are we doing here? See, there is a little sort of flat place there where it's not, you know, you could take this and flatten it with your, but then on the second, by the second fold, you've got something that's so thick. I mean, the... Let's see what's the double fold. This is this is origami paper, and this is cardstock. And well, oh, fairness. Let's. Um, so there's a difference. I don't know if it's really showing up through the camera, but um, there's a huge difference in the the weight of the cardstock. And the, it, yeah, I mean you can't get really. So the thing to do with cardstock or, you know, those big, like, huge, ginormous pieces of art paper um, is to cut the paper cut and then trace it onto the cardstock or the art paper and then cut it out with an exacto, you know, a craft knife thing. Um, that makes much more sense. So I wouldn't go any heavier than a paper bag. And even a paper bag is slightly ridiculous. So, um, so the first thing is the weight of the paper. If you get too heavy, it's going to be really hard to do. The other thing she told me was that when she's cutting, and we'll use the bond paper, office paper weight to show this, she was trying so hard when she was cutting to not have these papers kind of go all, you know, shimmy out of space, that it was hard to figure out where to put her concentration, you know, on her scissors that were trying to cut some little shape or on the paper that was trying to wiggle away from her. So I have two answers. Actually, I have a third, but I didn't bring it with me, and I'm sorry about that. One is just a regular paper clip, nothing very fancy. So when you're cutting on this side, put the paper clip over here. When you're cutting on this side, you know, just take the paper clip off. You can also start, what's the best way? Probably start from the top and move down, I think. I don't know. I should test that top down or point up. Anyway, if you're working with something that's a little larger, a uh, clothespin can work. The other thing that's really good, and I'm sorry I didn't bring one with me, and there isn't one here, is um, one of those little, I call them elephant clips. They're uh, binder clips. Yeah, and you can get these little short ones that are only about that long. Those are terrific because they're so strong and they're not very heavy. The thing that's not great about a paper clip, a 
clothespin, which actually works pretty well for me. Um, it, but they're big and they're heavy. and So probably a paper clip is fine to give you a hand when you're cutting over here to put a paper clip over there and just help you hold those papers in position. So that was the second thing I thought of that she and I had talked about in our conversation, my sister and I, when we were talking about making this successful for you. So paper weight and um, giving yourself a hand with a paper clip to hold things together. And I don't know which is, I'll tell you which is harder, the thicker paper or the thinner paper in terms of having it kind of um, wiggle away from you. And the third thing and there's nowhere to go on this. Absolutely, the sharper your scissors are, the better, the better, the better your, um, your paper cut is going to be. These scissors have been with me for decades, and they badly need to be sharpened. And the, there's wiggle, you know, like, oh, I guess I could do that. I don't know. Sometimes it seems like it just spins on me um, but it, they need to be tightened up and sharpened up and so I thought I would sort of experiment here with the paper bag um, one of the things my sister said to me is that with her scissors it's harder to cut there you need so much hand strength to to get the force all the way down but if you hold your scissors, you know, way up at the top, it's a little easier. And that's absolutely true. So that can be helpful too. Don't be shy with coming way up on your scissors. Now, this little sharp, almost brand new pair of scissors um, can... Oh, I'm using... I'm going quite far in on this too. Let's see if I was, but if I was going to make a little snip, I can do that with these scissors. And making a little snip with these, I don't even know if I could. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the strength. Yeah. So sharpness and, you know, strength. Um, but sharpness is easy. Just ha if, uh, keep them sharpened. Um, I was thinking before I made this video that I'm going to go around and look at scissor sharpeners because this kind of blade, whatever this metal is, um, you can buy little sharpeners for that. These, I think they're, I don't know, steel or whatever they are. And, um, I think they need to be actually the scissors need to be taken apart and it needs to be they need to be sharpened on a on a wheel you know like you sharpen knives and stuff um, yeah but we can sharpen these so if um, cutting paper <laughs> is fun and exciting for you the way it is for me um, then investing in a in a scissor sharpener is a reasonable idea. So, and then the last thing I thought of that my sister and I talked about was just practice. You know, um, I cut hundreds of paper cuts a year. <laughs> the things we do with our time. I don't know why I think that this is somehow like unworthy work, but, um, I don't know. I have these friends. Goddess, love these people. They are brilliant. They are extremely kind. They have always been fantastic to me. Actually, I found out that the husband and I have a common ancestor, so our kids are cousins. Um, but actually, we're like 10 generations away from each other or something. It's pretty silly. Uh, but anyway, these friends who have been in my life for ages, um, he's got two postgraduate 
degrees. I mean, post-college graduate, you know, like after he got his bachelor's degree and then he got two more degrees after that. And she also got two more degrees and one of her, her second degree is a doctorate. So like, holy cow. Um, so I've always thought, you know, like they have real jobs and I have a fake job, but I should think differently about that, I'm sure. So this is what a brown paper bag looks like. <gasps> Let's find some paper. How about that? This is really pretty. And you know what? It looks great against the yellow. Am I in frame? Yes, I am. I really like that. So it's possible to get a fairly delicate cut, even out of heavy brown paper bag. So this is the bond paper. Let's do a little chit chat. Now it's uneven at the top and I can choose to cut that to be even. Let's cut something. You know what? That actually kind of hurts. <laughs> I need to put so much pressure on that. This is one of my fun spirals that I really like to do. Yeah, see this one, it's got a much shorter um, blade. Um, so, and they're new and they're sharp. So everything about this equation is working out just fine. Uh, let's go, let's go here. I'm only putting my finger oh, yeah. and let's show you really what I'm doing. Um, I'm just putting my finger right here just so they don't <laughs> spray all over the place. Now these are moving. How close can I get and have this focus? Can you see that the top layer of green here um, is a different shape than the top layer of green down at the bottom? That's because while I was cutting, the papers moved on each other. Um, and the trick for that is to not cut with bond paper. Um, I mean, I can, I'm able to go back in and correct that. So now I will have negative spaces that really mirror each other a little bit better. Um, but that happens with paper cuts. What are you going to do? Um, I can hold it a, as close as I can get. And the confetti happens. And then I get a pretty, I get a better cut. So I was right with my sister that any amount of paper clipping or binder clipping you can fit in, if that's helpful, then do that. Um, and really, we're just here for play. So, uh, and, you know, brain candy and all that. So um, please don't go uh, get too frustrated with yourself about, oh, I'm not doing this right, or I'll never get there. Um, the last thing I talked about is practice and it makes a huge difference that my, f I have a, a huge amount of subconscious information that tells my hands where to go when I'm making paper cuts because I have made literally in my life, probably tens of thousands of paper cuts. So, you know, if you have an actual job, um, and you don't have time to do that, your fingers may not have the subconscious information that mine do. So not to worry. Just play. Have a very good time with this. And for heaven's sakes, it's if you really if you if you want to see things that are really pretty, go out and get some origami paper. It's a little expensive, but um, the the 
difference between origami paper and bond paper is enormous. It will be so much su more successful with a sharp pair of scissors and very thin paper. Um, right off the bat, it's going to make you 100% uh, more Oh, the paper is moving so much with this. It will make you more successful. Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a truly terrible cut. <laughs> um, can you see that I didn't come in from the corner at all? Like I missed a whole bunch of papers in the back. So we will go in and there. I kind of fixed that. Yeah. And um, I, I learned over the course of my life, I'm sorry, this cracks me up, um, that, yeah, the per perfectionism, it's really, really hard to do as a, as a human. And I'm, I'm fairly convinced that it isn't worth our time. Uh, there's some things we really need to get right. We need to love our kids. We need to love our partners. We need to have a lot of patience about that. We need to be great to the animals in our lives and behave very well with them um, and see and honor them for the genius skills that they have. Our kids are partners, um, the rest of our family, uh, the people in our family who are maybe kind of messing up with their behavior. Uh, we need to see everybody through the rosy, rosy glasses of um, love and patience. That's really important, and there's no way we're going to be perfect about that either, <laughs> as my children well know. Um, that's really important work and making pre perfect paper cuts. I don't know. There's so much fun to make and, and fun's really important in our lives. Um, so I highly recommend just doing this because they're really pretty. It's really fun to make something that's pretty. And, you know, if, if you have dexterity in your hands, I don't see any reason why a certain amount of practice um, and very thin paper and very sharp scissors wouldn't lead you to a whole lot of success. And I've made hundreds of thousands of these and I still can't get it right. So I, yeah, perfection is highly overrated because we get so much pleasure out of stuff that isn't even perfect. So let's go there. Let's stay there. Let's have a lot of fun with the pretty colors and oh yeah and being in love with our families and yeah my sister and I grew up in a sort of troubled place so it's not like I'm I'm saying have fun with your family um Sometimes that's not particularly possible. But that doesn't make any of us less divine. It just means some of us are working on stuff that makes it pretty hard to be kind. And that's really important. Oh, I just had a hit on things my children made. We would sit at the dining room table and make art for hours when they were little. They would sit in my lap. Sometimes I would have one of them on each knee 
<laughs> I'd sort of have this middle space, and they would work on either side of me. That's very cute and very satisfying, and some of my best parenting happened there. Thank goodness. And, uh, yeah, and, and their stuff, when they were, you know, three and four and five and nine and ten, I don't know, actually they all got pretty good at things pretty fast, but, uh, but it wasn't perfect. And one of my favorite, favorite books is a book where I collected little pieces of their art that they let me kind of cut around the shapes, and then I put them in this little pamphlet book. I love this book. It is one of my favorite objects. So that's pretty good. That's with um, bond paper. And you saw me cut that. You know, there's, there's a lot of <laughs> things that didn't work out so well. Uh, can you see this corner? Where are my fingers? Oh, there I am. Uh, this corner, there's a little... Like in a lot of these corners here, you can see little places where I bent. Oh, there's another good one where I bent the paper or I overcut or. Yeah, so some of that you can get out by taking the back of your fingernail and pressing it over all the creases and even over all these little crunchy places. And it kind of like, at least it, when the paper gets a little ripped and torn there at the corners, it at least squishes the paper all together. And, um, and then the little broken corners don't show as much. So, oh, and I've talked about this before. You can take, do we have a piece? Yes, we do. You can take just a plain piece of bond paper, plain paper, put it over the top and take an iron on, I don't know, sort of a medium heat. I don't think you have to go all the way up to cotton. Um, so get the iron warm and iron this and uh, it will really flatten this out very beautifully and uh, makes it even prettier. So that's a cool thing. All right, now let us try. Well, I can, but you know, it's really fun working with sharp scissors, so that's a thing. Yeah, so this is just heaven to cut. There's no, you know, I don't have to make a muscle to get there. And you can make, you know, a little bit more outrageous shapes. Now here would be a good place to take a paper cut and let's clip the paper together right above where I'm cutting. Um, which actually will help the rest of it not shimmy out of position. I can feel that, that this is pretty asking an awful lot of the paper. I can feel that that shimmied out of space a bit. Right there. Oh, and here's another good idea. When you are making paper cuts, turn off the music. I just put this in a blog post. Turn off the music, turn off the news, turn off your telephone. Stop talking. Stop 
getting other people's the, the, the fruits of other people's mind in your head and just listen to ourselves. So me here talking and trying to cut at the same time is vaguely absurd. Except that I want to talk to you and it would be very boring to listen to, I mean, to just watch without having me tell you what I'm doing. But it really is true that a, a lot of the direction uh, in our brains comes from our right brain. And our left brain, which is the director of language, um, is over there. So when I'm trying to be spatial here and be in my right brain and have that be the director and also trying to talk at the same time, Yes, that's asking rather a lot of ourselves. Which is why I made that flower video and couldn't um, <laughs> make flowers and talk at the same time and started a conversation that I never finished because I was completely distracted. And my left brain forgot to remind me to finish my thought. So I had a lovely experience last night. Oh, man. We really love to get outside affirmation. Yes, we do. So, um... As you may know, I finished, I, I joined a challenge to create a journal that made believe I had been uh, swept away from my Disney cruise and landed on a deserted island with a very small number of materials. Okay, so now make a journal. So um, I made my journal. It's enormous, and it was so, so much fun to make it. Um, <laughs> yes, I was in my happy place. Um, and then Nick the booksmith, who challenged us, um, said that we were supposed to give her a little message on her Etsy shop email and say that we had completed. And if we had made a, um, a YouTube about it, then we could give her the URL and she would go look. And so she did and she said she really liked my book and that felt so wonderful because I think the world of this woman, she is yeah, kind of genius at what she does. And she's great at making videos. And I will link her down below because I think so much of her. And I know that if you went there, you would probably, if you're watching me at all, you will enjoy her. So look at how intricate this is. Um, how did this go? This went like this and like this. So I just want to compare here, um, you know, what, what we can pull off with different weights of paper. And um, I have this terrible feeling my sister was trying to put too many folds in bond paper. And that's why she was having a hard time. Um, or it was one of the reasons. And I know that when I was a little girl, my family did not knock themselves out over having sharp scissors in the house. Um, so that could still be true about her. And um, But look at the difference between... Where's the center? Hello? Yeah, 
that is the center. Huh. So let's make sure we're in line. So look at the difference with the amount of detail I could get here. And this little, little, little stuff I'm being able to get out of the much thinner paper. I mean, I don't think I could have like cut into that space in the brown paper. Like, you know, done another sort of cut there. I mean, the chances of overshooting and cutting, going straight through the paper would be enormous with the brown paper. And that's pretty possible. It's more possible with this very thin origami paper. And, um, you know, actually, if you don't want to go spend money on origami paper, uh, another thing you can try is tissue paper. And the only thing is, oh, I didn't mention this. And actually, this is an important thing. It's sort of the lead up to paper cutting is more important than, well, actually, that I was giving it credit for. So um, I wouldn't have told you to be careful about this. But now that I think about it, I do need to tell you to be careful. So... Um, having good scissors, nice and sharp, helps a whole, whole lot. And having thin paper helps get a nice, delicate cut. And um, what was the other thing? Oh, and having nice, tight folds makes all the difference in the world. If I take... Well, this is cardstock, and I don't really mean this, but, um, you know, if I take cardstock and don't make a really hard, tight, I mean, really take the plastic handle of your scissors and go over this, your, your folds, even with very thin paper, take the, a bone folder or the back of your fingernail and go over those folds a bunch of times, it makes all the difference in helping keep your papers together and in holding on to everything enough so that you can make little delicate cuts. So all the prep work, you know, fold your paper so that it's nice and tight and get nice sharp scissors and, um, and use thin paper. That's really important to being able to make a paper cut that will Please you. And then there are those of us who could cut rocks and feel pretty pleased. But yeah, but we're talking normal people. Sorry, I'm normal. I know I am. I know this is real work. I really do. I get confused. So there we are. Do I have a piece of paper? that one and yes fold your papers back no you don't have to but yes do that because it helps it sit flat and if it's sitting flat you really you know your eye can see the geometry and the symmetry and all that fun stuff how are we doing am i in in screen. So there we are. Very heavy brown paper, medium weight, regular office paper, and quite light, very thin. So look at the difference between using heavy paper and how bold the shapes are, and using very thin paper and how delicate we can get. So all of that will help you. I want you to be successful with this because I personally have so much fun making paper cuts. <laughs> Yay! Um, and I want you to have this much fun too. And it's brain candy and it makes us smart. Absolutely. I, I really, after, you know, many decades, let me tell you, making art makes you smart and it makes all of us smart. And it, um, it helps settle our hearts 
um, there were times, and I mean, this is sort of an obvious thing to say, so I don't mind telling my children's story a little bit here. My um, kids lived in a divorced home, and there are anguishes with things like that. And when it got very tough for me, and when life sometimes got a little tough for them, we would sit down at the dining room table and make art. And I would watch, and I've seen more than just my kids. I've seen other people's kids, and I've also seen adults um, come in, you know, just quivering with all the, especially moms, you know, all the stuff on their minds. And, and we would sit and make art for a while and... You know, the energy waves just really settled out after a while. So art calms us down and makes us healthier. And while this information is going back and forth between our two hands and the two spheres of our brain, hemispheres, um, I am quite convinced that a whole lot of other information gets to find its place. It's as if um, unsettling pieces of information about our world, like where we have to spend money or what's broken and what's working well or um, how our relationships are going or how the government is going or anything that, you know, we get really charged up and, it, and it's a little floating piece of information that I maybe am holding in my left brain, you know, and I'm thinking in a linear way about, well, this happened and then this happened and then this happened and it's broken. Um, and then I get all anxious and crazy about that. Um, and when I make art, I get to bring in uh, uh, the space of my right brain and the details that my right brain can glean from a situation. So then when I'm making art, and my brain is passing information back and forth about art things, about where to hold the paper and the scissors at the same time to get something cut. Then other pieces, I'm convinced this is true. I'm an artist, however, not a scientist or brain whatever. So I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Um, information when I make art, more information passes than just art information. All kinds of other memories and understandings from one side of my brain get a chance to go over and they go, oh, wait a minute, I was there in that, let's say, when the car broke down and I remember this. And so this might, so then you start adding you make connections between all the different memories and the pieces of information we have. And then you say, well, now what do I do? I have a broken car. And because both sides of the brain are remembering pieces of information, all of a sudden you go, oh, well, this is the whole situation, which means that I know that my friend has the same brand of car and she goes to a person she likes a lot for fixing things and I can call her because my phone is working. So yay, that's wonderful. And I can ask somebody else for help, you know, and it all starts fitting together and then you go, oh, okay, so this is what you do. That's why I told you that story about how I didn't know where to move when I when I moved my kids down to this new house after the divorce and I was sitting doing cross stitch and all of a sudden I got it which house would work out for us amongst all the houses I had seen with the realtor um, because all that information starts coming together and they go oh I know who you are and this is and then you get a full pot of information and you can say oh now I I can see where the solution might be yeah, this um, video is plenty long enough, so I wish <laughs> for you so much joy in the answers to your problems. And um, I'm pretty sure that if you cut about 10 different paper cuts to the best of your ability, and you don't even have to do it right for all this brain stuff to go on. I mean, you don't have to have a perfect paper cut. You just have to be cutting paper. 
So um, do the best you can, and I hope you find the answer to all of your questions. Um, I hope I find the answers to all of my questions, too. I have a few questions, um, and I wish us all well. Bye. Have a very good day.